all right so what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel man it's your boy codename agent who oh it's danger god damn it and check it out man after my last video where i was talking to you guys about some of the things that i don't like about update 5.9 i had a whole lot of you guys hitting me up asking if i was quitting the game if i was just going to be playing kof and seven deadly sins full time now no more future fight upload and i'm here to give you guys my answer man it's a hell no right like seriously there's no way that i'll be quitting more future fight after all this time just because we've had a couple bad updates i was just venting my frustration at the future fight team and the direction that they're taking this game in and anybody who truly cares about this game would feel some type of way when you see that they're destroying something that you actually really love right so yeah Anyways, long story short, no, I'm not quitting the game, right? However, like I said previously, until things change, I will be taking a free-to-play approach and I won't be spending any money at all. What I will be doing, however, is spending the resources that I've already accumulated over months and years of playing the game and spending quite aggressively in the last, like, 9-10 months, right? And as such... For today's video, we're going to be building and testing Nathan Essex, Mr. Sinister, one of the three new characters that's coming in in this update. Now, I have some biometrics or some X genes for the character, not because I bought the X gene selector, because I told you guys that ain't happening, right? So when we get new premium characters in the next update, I don't know, depending on how good that update is, I may or may not buy it, right? But basically, I got some X genes for him right here. So I unlock the character and I have some more that I can get when this event ends. However, I'm not gonna be waiting around for that. No idea why I clicked on that. Anyways, what I'm gonna be doing is actually using a mega rank up ticket that I have in my inventory here from previous purchases, right? Not saying he's deserving of this, but I'm a content creator. And I know some of you guys out there are wondering just how good Nathan is. Additionally, we got a mega tier two advancement ticket, right? From a previous event. And I had five of them already from previous purchases. So I'm going to be dropping one on Nathan out of love, but also out of curiosity, hoping that if I sacrifice them saying like my mega tier two, it could possibly save you guys from doing it because I'm in a good space. I already have all the characters in the game built for you guys. If you're new, you're free to play, you have one of these things, right? You're looking at somebody like Namor, you're looking at somebody like, I don't know, Luna Snow possibly, right? I would say definitely just let me test out the character first and see how good he ends up being. Because from what I saw in APK, he realistically looks like he's gonna be a character that you forget about until he gets a uniform or some type of buff. Unfortunately, it looks like he's another weak paywall but that was just the apk so hopefully things change for him quite drastically on the live server so what i'm going to do here really quickly is actually roll this for cooldown and i'm going to slot him with a couple um perfect a couple ignore defense urus get him ready we're going to take him into some world boss a little bit of shadowland stage 50 plus because like, unless he can do that at the very least, then, uh, yeah, he's definitely, ooh, there we go. Thank you. He's definitely not going to be worth Jack. All right, so we're going to give him two of these. That should bring him up to 50%. There we go. We're 50-50. That's what I always care about, right? And not bad. Attack speed is almost maxed out, and that's because of his leadership in effect. All right this thing right here giving him 10 percent and right here for the um iso set i was rolling if i had landed power of angry hulk i would have gone with it because the animations are really slow on him all right but i got overdrive and i decided i was gonna rock with it and see how it turns out because he doesn't give himself any additional crit rate any additional crit damage so overdrive is actually not bad for him especially since 90 percent of the time you use him you're going to use him with his leadership and that's going to give you some all speed all right so what I'm gonna do here is max this out because this gives the defense down. And this seems to be his most powerful skill. The beam here gives the invincibility and it's a skill that you can channel indefinitely. 
all right so that could give you some really good damage as well so that's gonna get maxed out for me this we're gonna max out as well because it gives them the attack buff and it should go up to 70 percent yep so that's 210 percent when you have three summons out and this one mm, we'll, we'll max it out just because it makes your summon stronger so it looks like yeah we'll just max everything out on him like i said let me make the sacrifices that you guys can learn from and then from there just uh make your decision right so what i'm gonna do with nathan here is actually give him the regular custom gear something with mind damage on it right so this is fine mind damage recovery rate is actually not the worst thing in the world right mind damage max hp would have been a little bit better but it's fine so we have one two three skills that are mind damage two that are energy that's fine the only one that kind of sucks to be energy is this one because this is the one that you want to proc on if you for some reason miss your proc on the fifth but it's completely fine so we're going to take him into a little bit of content here we're 372 in the world which is actually quite shocking because i didn't think that many people were going to have him at tier two already but it'd be like that so 50 this is perfect right he has a type advantage against this boss right here should test him a little bit and yeah let's see how it goes oh, i'm about to say i thought i used them i was like no i didn't i couldn't use them before <laughs> all right so just so we don't miss the damage proc i think i'm gonna open with a fifth Yo, the four is looking mad weak. Okay. Okay, so he's actually cutting to a 50 really, really easy here. Wow. That was with no prop though. Yeah, this is, this is mad easy for him. Okay. So stage 50, 30 seconds, that's light work. So it looks like he can go up to at least a 65, 70 at level 60. That's good. All right. Let's take him into some harder content. I kind of want to put him against Apocalypse and see how he does. Stage 29 might be a little bit too hard for him. IFD Abyss is annoying. All right. So we'll test him here. Never used him ever against Apocalypse. Barely ever fight Apocalypse because mutant materials, you know, the cap and everything. All right. But yeah. Let's see if he has any damage against Apocalypse. And we're gonna give him, we'll give him one support, then we'll give him Weapon X for the extra summon, All right? And she'll gonna, she's gonna give him some healing as well. So we'll give him, actually, let's give him Shuri, extra defense. And then, can't think of the last time that I used Weapon X as a support. Should be interesting. Where is she? Oh, right there, under my thumb. Fat fingers. All right, we're rocking like this with no mind control. Let's see what happens. This might be asking for way too much, you know what I'm saying, like 29 with a level 60 character. Even with a type advantage. Okay, let's move out of there. Uh, I was looking at the eye. I'm missing everything. Because of all the setup that's required for him to get off like optimal damage, bro, a regular damage probably just won't do well with him, but that was not that much damage. Oh gosh. Am I gonna land right in it? Yep, yep. I'm getting guard broken out the wazoo. Bro, what would I have been better off giving him a transcendence? What? Bro. We dropped below 50, bro, I got pulled out of my skill. <laughs> He's not doing no type of real damage. 29 might have been too much, guys. Yo, Apocalypse didn't even take any damage from that. Apocalypse just straight walked away, bro. <laughs> he died, yeah, bro. Let me drop this down to like a 15. This 29 looking too hard for him, bro. All right, let's give him another shot here. See if he can pull through.
Okay, can I get my four skill off? Can I get my four skill off? Can I get my... Okay, right, of course. Can't move when you're using that four skill. Can't touch the D-pad or you get nothing. Okay. And I'm gonna get silenced. At least I'm still in my fifth skill. See, Weapon X is not doing anything out of the ordinary for him. Like, she's just doing what she would normally do for everybody else as a striker. Okay, let me out, bro. Let me out of that. I don't even get a chance to use the um, third skill. I'm gonna try to use one, then two. Then three, come on Apocalypse, get out of the iframe. See, that was looking like it was gonna be good, but by the time you're finished setting up, like, you know what I'm saying? You're already <laughs> at the risk of like, either ooh, dying or getting interrupted by the enemy's iframe, right? Cause yeah, like using one, pull out that summon, use it, see, I don't even get the chance, use two, then three, then five, bro. Doing all of that and then trying to land your damage proc on your fifth skill, it's hard. It's hard. Right? So, ooh, he's dead. Shit. <laughs> okay, we're going to try him against another boss because he's struggling against Apocalypse, or at least I'm struggling with him. All right, so since he's a elemental character, I decided to drop him in against Ebony Ma here. And we're going to see how it works out for him. We're going to go two, one. My proc already went off. We're going to go three, see if we can catch the other proc on the five. Okay. All we have to try and do is stick close to her summons or have him stick close to our summons okay so he's doing a little bit better because um although this geezer iframes a lot seems like apocalypse iframes even more so my proc is now off we're gonna try to see if we can okay got interrupted why because he iframed my summons splendid okay lost my proc there i'm thinking judgment or rage if you if you really like this guy i don't think he's deserving but i think because of all the setup that's required those are the only like options to actually like not have to deal with the frustration of missing your damage Brock really often after the setup and right there I did all the setup but then I got iframed by Ebony that's annoying yeah see like I'm gonna use my fifth here he immediately canceled out of my fifth to go after my summons oh my gosh yeah that nightcrawler syndrome he definitely gonna need Rachel I might have to do another run here with Rachel to see if we can keep the whole bastard. Like, I think if you can keep this whole bastard from iframing, then yeah, it would be a lot easier. But it's a lot, a lot of stuff that you gotta do, right? Just to actually get damage out of them. Like, if we play him without doing the summons, we could do a little bit better. You know what, let me just do that. Let's let's say, screw the summons. All right, so we're gonna run this with just three, four, and five, and just say, forget it to the summons and see what happens. Ah. Uh -uh. I accidentally put out the summons. I'm instinctively pressing two now. Okay. I really want to see if I do better without the summons. Because I feel like they're just actively working against him.
I'm still going to use the three skill just because we still have um, the summon out from weapon X. All right, so that should still give us some type of damage buff. How big of a buff? I don't know, but he definitely does better. He definitely does better without using his, <laughs> his one and his two. You can clearly see it. It's clear as day. So those two skills are actively working against him. What the hell, bro? Like, I'm telling you, these guys don't test their characters. These guys just, like, wing it. All right, I'm telling you. Like, you can clearly see. Like, it's so much easier to play him. And you get so much damage. Like, more damage while trying, like, seriously. Okay. I, I instinctively pressed the two there. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, the character seems way easier to use. And gives you way better results if you just skip over the one and two. Which I pretty much suspected from the get-go. Because of the Nightcrawler Syndrome, we know basically any character that has a targetable summon when they have iframes and stuff, it's pretty much always a problem, All right? So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to wrap this thing right here. I still need to do a little bit more testing with him, but I don't want to keep you guys here for a 30-minute video today. I just wanted to give you guys a first look at him. I don't know. I, I still need to do more testing, so I don't want to completely write off the one and the two. But based on what I saw there at the very end, it seems like even though in theory, right, having these summons out should result in more damage because you're getting a 70% damage buff for each summon, right? And you can have a maximum of three out because you get one here, one here, and you have one from Weapon X, which will give you a 210% attack buff. It seems like because the summons are targetable, right, it results in you getting lower damage because the boss is constantly iframing you interrupting your skill moving away from you because they're just trying to fight your summons whereas if you just say you know what forget it to these two skills and just spam your iframe and try to chain them together hug the boss it seems like you end up getting more damage by just having weapon x for her summon because her summon is actually not targetable Right, so at the very least, if you're just using three, four, and five, you should, in theory, just still be getting a 70% attack buff, which should be better than using, let's say, I don't know, Valkyrie and Shuri together with him. I will need to do some testing maybe in a future video to see how much more damage I get on average with Weapon X and a regular support like Shuri versus somebody like Valkyrie and Shuri together. All right, so if that's something you guys want to see, hit me in the comments, let me know. But I really think that the reason why he's doing a little bit better with Weapon X has to do with two things. One, the additional summon, if it's working as they suggested in the live stream. But honestly, half the time these guys are talking in the live stream, I think they're just talking out their ass because they clearly don't play the game, right? And two, Weapon X strikes for him. So when she comes out, she's applying the 100% defense down, not, not you, right? You from her forward skill. So if she hits this when she comes out and you immediately trigger his fifth skill right after, you get 100% defense down. And then because of that, it's not really because she is taking up a spot on your team that you're doing more damage. It's just because she's doing what she's been doing for months as a striker, right? So yeah. Something for you guys to think about, food for thought. However, I don't think Mr. Sinister is worth a mega tier 2 ticket. Just first glance, more testing to come. I will test him as much as you guys want. But I say, if you're free to play, collect the bios. Don't use them. Just wait until we get another faction battle, whenever that may be. Or if he gets a uniform or a buff or something down the line. Or we get newer game modes that make him a requirement there or something. Then we can talk about it. But for now, I'll say keep him at tier one. Get him to level 60 if you just want to have a little bit of fun with him in Shadowland. But I would say keep the bios on hand just in case. Right? So until next time, stay safe. I love you guys. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace.